Once again, a very Merry Christmas to you and your loved ones today. The Lord has given us a great day to worship Him and to glorify Him. You'll see from the monitor, my sermon today is entitled, Fit for a King. And that's what I'd like to address today. What about that expression, fit for a king? We've all heard that before. You've heard people say, oh, this meal is fit for a king. Or you've heard, this vacation resort is fit for a king. Or how about this one? This cruise line is fit for a king. That We've used that expression over and over again, fit for a king. And then, of course, we expand on that. When you check into a hotel room these days, they say for a little extra money, you can get a king-sized bed. King-sized bed. Now they even have king-sized desserts. And if you don't believe me, go to a New Jersey diner. Now, why does a cheesecake have to be this big? I just want to know. Or if you order the strawberry shortcake, they bring you a slice that's about this tall and this wide. No one on earth can finish it. It's fit for a king, that's why. Even fast food restaurants today have king-sized meals. For an extra couple of bucks, you get two gallons of Coke instead of one. That's a meal fit for a king, right? Well, it's so ironic because when the king of kings was born into our world, there were no accommodations fit for a king. In fact, it was downright disgusting. Think about the story. Jesus was born into our world, known as the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, sent from God above. And did he have the presidential suite at Hotel Bethlehem? No. Did he have special accommodations like room service? No. Was there somebody there to kind of roll down the sheets and put a Hershey kiss on the pillow at night? Absolutely not. The circumstances surrounding the birth of Jesus were everything but fit for a king. No king would want to be born in a barn. As I said last night in my message, when they arrived at the Hotel Bethlehem, the hotel manager basically said, hey, there's no rooms available, but we got a barn in the back if you want to chill out there. And they really did chill out. It was cold, it was airy. But as most barns, you can imagine, it was stinky and smelly and maybe even noisy. There were cows mooing and chickens clucking and all kinds of commotions going on. Now I ask you this, is that a room fit for a king? I doubt it. Is that any way to treat a king? I doubt it. Most hotels today keep special suites available, presidential suites, executive suites, just in case somebody special shows up. And by special, I'm talking about what they call a VIP, a very important person. Most hotels today have these special rooms, usually on the top floor, called the penthouse. Just in case a celebrity shows up unannounced and they say, oh, we'll put you up in our executive suite. Or if a politician shows up, oh, we'll put you up in the presidential suite. By the way, it is rumored that one time Michael Jackson showed up at a certain resort in the Bahamas and he paid $1 million to stay one night at the resort. One million dollars a night. How's that for a VIP situation? That's the way the world works. Let's face it. If the King of England visits New York City, and let's just say, this is very unlikely, but let's say the King of England shows up unannounced, King Charles as we now know him. He shows up at a posh hotel in New York City unannounced, and can you imagine the hotel staff saying, Sorry, Charlie, we don't have a room for you. You should have called ahead. You should have made reservations. But hey, we have the maintenance shed in the back uh, attached to our indoor garage. If you want to stay in the maintenance shed, be our guest. Be our guest. 
They would never say that to King Charles, would they? No. They would kick somebody out of a room in order for the king to have a room fit for a king. That's why the Christmas story is so ironic. Because it's ironic because the king of kings is born into our world and they tell the king of all kings, go back to the barn. There's no room for you. We don't have special accommodations for you. And I, I say once again, is that any way to treat a king and certainly the king of all kings? Of course not. And to add insult to injury, when Jesus was born, they didn't even have a bed. They didn't even have a crib. You know what they did? They looked and he said, oh, there's a cow trough over there. Let's put some hay in there and we'll drop the baby right in there. How's that? Meh. How's that for a barn fit for a king, huh? You know, sadly, in our world today, there are a lot of people who treat Jesus this way. They don't make their lives fit for a king. And you know what I'm noticing? I'm not being critical as much as being observational. Did you know that Sunday mornings are not fit for the king of kings anymore? Sunday mornings are no longer the priority time to worship the king of all kings. Sunday mornings are not fit for a king. And I'll give you a few examples. A few years ago, there was a television commercial and the words in the commercial were, Sundays are made for the New York Times. What are they saying? They're saying that Sundays are the time you're supposed to read that newspaper. That's the time. There was another commercial that I saw not long ago where it was a television commercial and they said, make your Sunday morning special. Watch Meet the Press on Channel 4. And then there's a resort not far from here. I won't mention the name. But at the resort, there's this big promotional thing. And they say, make your Sunday morning special. There are discounts at the spa. You can get a, an executive massage at half price on Sunday morning. That's when you come out. What am I saying? Sundays used to be fit for a king. Sundays used to be fit for the king of all kings, Jesus the Lord. Sundays used to be set aside to worship and adore the king. Well, now it's a different story. Society is just too busy to make Sundays fit for the king. And even on Christmas, as I mentioned last night in my message, even on Christmas, a lot of families are not making room for the king. They're not saying, this is the king's day. This is King Jesus' day. This is the birthday of the king. Let's make Jesus the reason for the season. No, it's more about what gift are we going to buy for Aunt Matilda this year? It's just who we are as a society. But we can change all that, can't we? We're here in the king's house. You're sitting in the king's room. We're worshiping the newborn king. We're singing, go tell it on the mountain. We're singing, go come all ye faithful. And you know what? We're adoring the newborn king. And I'm so glad that you took your time this morning to come to the king's house, the king of king's house, to say thanks be to God and happy birthday, Jesus. That's really what this day is all about. And let me tell you, we're having a worship service fit for a king. Because we've designed this worship service to praise God and the King Lord Jesus. And you know what? In a few minutes, we're going to have a meal fit for a king. That's right. You heard it. A meal fit, fit, fit for a king. You know why? We're going to have the bread of life and the cup of salvation. And no earthly meal can top what Jesus offers. Welcome to the celebration for the king. May the king be first in your life at all times, not just today, but every day of the year. When you wake up in the morning, say, thank you, King Jesus, for preparing a place for me in your kingdom. Recall what Jesus said according to John chapter 14. He said, I will go and prepare a place for you 
He was talking about his eternal kingdom. And someday we're going to open our eyes and see the glorious and wonderful kingdom he's prepared just for you and me. So today, let's worship the king. Let's adore the king. And let's make this worship experience fit for a king. God bless you and Merry Christmas. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. <laughs>